with offensive line coach Art Kehoe on National Letter of Intent Day. And Coach Kehoe, well, welcome back to the University of Miami. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, beautiful. It, it certainly is. And let's go right into National Letter of Intent Day. And, and Coach, you got into the process late here at, at the University of Miami as far as recruiting goes, but you've got only about 32 plus years of experience. And, uh, you know, the day itself, uh, you're going to get some surprises and sometimes you get some disappointments. Um, yes, and that's inevitable, and in particular because uh, because Coach Golden and his staff just got here on I think it was December third, and they only had uh, he was saying it was like 15 days actually on the road with all the dead periods and you know non-contact period days, and uh, I think that this is a terrific staff. They did a, a great job. Coach, when you when you so you've been here long enough now to, to get the message, to get the plan. Tell us what the Al Golden story is. What is the Al Golden plan? Well, I t I'll tell you this much: I don't have the whole plan down pat yet. But, the, but these players better get it real quick. I know that this guy is intense. He was a terrific player at Penn State. He is smart. He's a vision. He has a vision for everybody on. Everything we're going to do, whether it's whether it's in the community, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's competing in the weight room, whether it's how we practice, how we prepare, uh, and the coaches too, and everybody's on board, and that's what I'm excited about. I don't really, you know, I know most some of the players, and I've met my offensive line, but uh, that's what I've been telling them. I've been spreading the message to the few guys that I know that, you know, the, the new sheriffs in town. And, Buckle up and, and do what you're supposed to do, and do it early. Be there early, and that's what he's about. Get up early, stay late, have fun, work hard, get it done. And I, I'm, I'm jacked about the whole deal. You talk about having the opportunity to meet some of your guys. You've got a freshman All-American last year, and Chantrell Henderson came out, played a lot at right tackle, was able to fill in periodically at the left tackle spot. What do you see for him? Well, he's a, he's a beautiful looking specimen. For an offensive lineman, and you know, you always worry, or you're always concerned about a guy that big that he can bend. But he's very, he has good bendability, good athleticism, and and uh, you know, I know the, all the coaches up at Creighton Durham Hall, who one of the best programs year in and year out for years. You know, the Scanlon brothers, and of course, we got the Walshes from there, and and uh, I went after a lot of guys. It was hard to get them, but. Uh, but I, you know, he's a product of that program, so he's been coached well, and he, and he, and he's been guided good. And then the, the fact that could you know that he came here and played early and did a good job, and then just getting to meet him, you, you know, he looks you in the eye. Coach Swayze, and, and, you know, feels great about him down in the weight room and his work ethic, and you know, he's a he's a young project, and we're going to have to grind on him. But he's a, the best kind of project you could ever see at six foot. I don't, I'm not sure, but he's 6'8", six, six, eight, eight, 360 maybe. Right. And, and uh, you know, we talked about playing in this heat down here, maybe he'd be better off a little lighter, but he's not a fat guy. To no, me, he's, he's a, not. He's a very well-constructed and bender, and I'm very fortunate to have a chance to coach him, and I'm very excited about it. And, uh, you know, he's got, oh, he's got some things to learn, and we just talked about mostly just getting on board with Coach Golden's plan. And understanding that I'm here and everybody in this building is here just to help him get better. But 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 if we win, when we start winning and when we get this thing rolling, he'll benefit from all that educationally and on the field and everything else. And and that's what it's all about. We have some other good players too that you got some great players. We're going to get to those in a minute, but you, it has come across the wire. Taylor Graboy uh, is uh, an offensive tackle. Another size guy, Art. Six foot seven, two hundred ninety-two pounds. Go to Dallas, Georgia, for 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 a guy that grew up wanting to be a, a University of Miami football player. He was attacked by the Southeastern Conference. They a lot of the schools wanted there. Georgia Tech was after him. All the ACC schools, but lo and behold, he ends up at the U and. Uh, what can we expect out of him? I know you've spent some time watching him on tape. Well, I, I, I'm just, you know, because I'm here so late, I, I, I'm, a, I'm trailing in the recruiting process. But, you know, uh, Coach Golden and Michael Barrow did a terrific job with this guy. And I think he may be the surprise of the cl class. And I'm not saying that because he's an offensive lineman. I'm just, you know, when you put all the little 
excerpts together for the recruiting class and all the guys are going there, 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 and you've got their, their film and you're looking at it, he comes on and he is all of 6'7", and he's 290 pounds. And I, I guess he had a problem his junior year and didn't play because they wanted to move him. And, and uh, it was like, like we all, when we're young, we may make mistakes, and he learned from that process. And that may be one of the reasons he might have been a little under the radar. But I'm, a, I'm especially at this late juncture, I'm into the, to the film. And when you watch the, the video on this guy, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, he's getting his hands inside, tight elbows, he's taught well. He's got a flat back. He's running guys off the, and I'm saying, he's got grades, great family. And how about this program? The Coach Reed, who I've just met too, with one phone call, but I'm going to get to meet this guy more. They went 15 years at this school and won 19 games. And since that time, his first year they went 12-0. and And they've won like 47-10 and 10 or something they are since then. And, and when I asked this guy, I said, you know, what are you doing today? You know, because I'm, I'm trying to get to know him. I said, what are you doing today? He said, Coach, here's what we do at this school. He said, we block, we tackle, we run, and we lift weights. And he says, that's what I do, and I'm staying in this program. And he had the, that day, he said he was doing like 315 for five, 365 for five, 405 for five, 425 for five, and he finished up with like 450 for like two reps on the squat. And he's six, seven, 290 pounds, and, you, and he's only 17. So just imagine where he's going to be where he's 19 or 20. And he's obviously been, I hate to call it this, but it's like a brainwashing, what's going on at, at that school. And he's into it, and he's a good student, and his parents are great, and and he wanted to be a king for his whole life. He just Can't when he was like five, he was it was all about the you, you know. And and I said, man, I, I told him, I said, you're a terrific player, and I can't wait to work with you. And and uh, his dad was very very impressed with not only Coach Golden but the whole staff. He said our operations people and everybody that dealt with him. He named names, and they he said they did a terrific job with him on a visit and. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Coach, you have, you have scoured the, the country and other countries for all this alignment and, I mean, going to Canada and doing whatever you've had to do. And, and when you look at an offensive lineman like Taylor, he is a guy that as a junior played tight end or, or as a sophomore played tight end. That tells you that there's a little more of an athlete involved than just the standard old offensive lineman. Oh, you know, I, well, Eric Winston, Mark, Mark Cooper, you we played with. Um, I'm trying to think of some. We, we, to me, I would love to, you know, those recruiting tight ends. I mean, if you're going after big people, I don't care whether it's Florida, Texas, North Carolina, Montana. If there's a big guy at your school, I'd like to see that he's playing offense and defense, that he's maybe playing basketball or baseball, that he's an athlete. Because, and, and, and those guys that go 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", even if they're a little slender at 17 or 18 at 225, 235, you know, that kind of body, we, we've seen it. I mean, they change and they get into the weight room and, and you just, maybe they could end up being fast enough and good enough to stay a tight end, but if they don't, they, they can go everywhere. You know, that's kind of Jimmy Johnson philosophy that, you know, the, that guy can end up at the end, he can end up at offensive tackle, he can end up at defensive tackle, and they end up being terrific with their foot, with their footwork and their speed and quickness. Coach Fish, the offensive coordinator, a guy that uh, got NFL experience, has spent time with Steve Spurrier. I know that you've spent, been able to spend some time, quality time, with him trying to to develop this playbook. Because come tomorrow, really, you start on spring practice, don't you? There's no downtime. There's no vacations. You've got to get this thing together and and get the terminology in place for 2011. We've already started, and he has a book already made, and I'm just. You know, all the other coaches on the, on the offensive staff too. They're just they're, we're going to have fun, and we have a really good concept. I, I it's kind of a for me, it's a mixture of some other systems and the systems that we had here at Miami. And I'm just excited about you know the line. He he told he told me when we were interviewing. He says, Art, I want to sit down with you and and really get concrete with the line calls. He he sees himself 
as a line fan in a quarterback's body. And he says, he says, I love the line, and I know that they're the key to what's going on with the offense. And so we have to be, you know, together at the hip. And uh, uh, Jed's, Jed's a good person, and, and I'm really anxious to work and learn the system, and, as well as the teaching, you know, and I'm because I'm into simplicity. I want my guys to be aggressive, to make the calls, to work together as a unit, and to, and to be aggressive as, as aggressive as they can be. And, and, and you talk about that unit, and you talk about the coaching, and you, and you talk about having to be on the same page. Over the last 30 years of football, has his offensive line play changed that much? Is, is that an area that, that you could basically remind, go back to the same fundamentals as when we played? Well, when you and me were playing, we had to, we had to put our hands yeah, like this. Right. And, had to and we still couldn't even get extension. But right about that time, it was changing. Mm -hmm. And they became into full extension, both run and pass. And, and they laid out the area of the body. You can have your hands in and all that. So that part of it's changed. But, you know, it still comes down to hard work and effort and toughness and things that you can't really put a measuring stick on. And, and uh, and Tony Wise, who, who mentored me, and he's a beautiful, we, we all know oh, yeah. Tony, what he's about. You know, he, he always says, Art, this game hasn't changed. He says, what I learned, you know, up at the University of Pittsburgh from great coaches. It, it, and the Steelers. Oh, right. and the Steelers. He, he says, all of that stuff is the way to play the game. He says, he, there's little technique differences from this coach to that coach, but eventually it comes down to jumping the cadence, and finishing the block, and hitting low and staying low, and sticking your face in there, and you got to come up as a coach with with drills to work into your system to get that done. And uh, it's 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 fun and it's work, but it, it'll always be with our guys. And you know this: if you're playing good, but you're not communicating with me, and I'm playing bad, then you're not really playing good either. That's right. It's about all of us talking to each other and playing as a unit and if you're not getting that done you just can't have success coach let's go let's go into the to the, the recruiting machine that's that was built here the last two months and what you see is going to happen here with with coach golden and his plan and this staff i get the feeling and, and spending time with you and, and the other coaches that that this miami machine is getting ready to go uh, to, to tr hit on eight cylinders. I mean, the whole nation's going to get saturated. The, the, the more you're going to unearth the players that you did for so many years that helped turn programs around, whether it was under Howard Schnellenberger or Jimmy or pick the coach, whether it was Butch Davis. It just just share with the, the listening audience on, on the intensity that is now here in recruiting at the University of Miami. Well, well first of all, when I got to, when I got to talk to Coach Golden, I was, a, well, I shouldn't say amazed, but his knowledge of the University of Miami and what's gone on here was really impressive, you know. And and he, he says things when 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 he's directing us as a staff that, you know, he's he's done his homework. He's read up on our our traditions, the bowls we went to, the the big games we played in, the characters of the coaching and playing that were here, and and he understands that. But he, he talks, remember Coach Schnellberger talked about the, the state of Miami being from Orlando across to Tampa and then all the way down. And he calls it the eye of the hurricane, which he thinks the eye is about a two and a half hour drive. And, and, uh, and everything in there, we have, to, we have to canvas and we have to developed as good a relationships as it gets and we have to get those coaches those players on our campus and we have to let them know how we are repeatedly so you know he you know he has junior days walk on days camps and everything's organized because he got this done at temple and that's where i'm from i'm from philadelphia and I, if temple's a heck of a school but in football they struggled to say the say the least and and what they did there, you know, with Mark, Mark D'Onofrio and Paul Williams and the guys he brought with them, they did an unbelievable job. And you know, people go, well, yeah, well, well, no. What he did was a great job. And he did it because he had a vision and a plan, and his coaches and players bought in and they followed through. And 
I just see his energy and his enthusiasm, and, and I felt it the first time I talked to him, and, 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 I'm, and now that I'm here, I know that everybody was on board. Are the players on board yet? I don't think so. But it's, it's going to take some time, but they better get on board. I know they better get on board. And I've, I'm spreading the word and telling them, hey, don't think that this isn't a, that this is going to be a, well, I guess in some ways it's a democracy, but it's going to be get in line, do what you're supposed to do, be where you're supposed to be, and get it done now, or pay, or there will be repercussions. And and that's the way it has to be. They have to know that together we win, and we have a plan. And and he has a good plan. And I, I'm anxious. I'm not. I'm just starting to learn. Welcome back to uh, the University of Miami, Coach Kehoe. We're going to throw it now to. Uh, Mr. Joe Zagaki as he picks up where Don Bailey and Art Kehoe left off. 